Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be game two between Ninja and Aegis, part of VSL's 16 Hasu League round of 16 Group C. This is the final matches. I'm never sure what to say. It's like the final, but it's like the final, final three games, potentially. Could end here. If Aegis takes a victory, though, it will... Oh, this drone is not mining. Okay, now it started mining, but that'll hurt. That cascades... Bottom right hand corner, Ninja in black, very appropriate color. Color Upper left, Aegis in hot pink once again. This is going to be on Vermeer. <coughs> At cross positions, if Aegis goes for that two hatch Minos play once again, it'll be a little bit harder to execute as there's a lot of space. And so there's a lot of soft room for error for Ninja. But as far as <coughs> counterattacks and Ninja being able to get Medic Marines out on the field to counter his opponent and be a little bit more challenging as well. Vermeer does have these bases that are wide open. Oftentimes I've seen Zerg to go ahead, and I think I mentioned this previously, <coughs> to kind of go for these ramped maps. Apologies for the cough. Still recovering. I'll be happy when I don't have this uh, going on anymore. It's disrupted sleep and a lot of other things. It's been frustrating to deal with. Anyway. Curious if either player is going to go for, well, probably going to see a 12th hatch. I would actually like to see Ninja maybe even go for Rax into expansion here. Once again, skip even that initial Marine. See if he sends out an SCV scout to go ahead and make that happen. Is sending out <coughs> initial, <coughs> excuse me, SCV. Looks like he's going to go top right first. We did in fact see a 12th hatch for Aegis top left. Expecting him to go for that two hatch style play once again. The three hatch style I haven't seen a bit in a bit. Ninja executed it to a lot of success. Really, it was Aegis. For a moment there, I thought that the Mutalisks and Zerglings had broken through. Overlord spotting that SAV, trying to regroup. That is going to give information to Aegis as far as where his opponent's at. What's interesting is, is with that positioning, that SAV doesn't get vision of that Overlord. <coughs> so he knows waiting for him to get out of the region before continuing with his movement path. Second SCV being produced. We do have a couple of Marines being produced out of necessity. But looks like Ninja is going to go for Rax to expand to start, especially moving and seeing the later stages of this hatchery. There goes that SCV to go ahead and drop that command center. Gas is up. It's looking like a two hatch build thus far. And I think we're going to see Mutalisks once again as this Overlord's making its way bottom left. Which oftentimes suggests that it's going to be one of those Mutalisks that's, uh, or one of those Overlords that's going to be grouped with the Mutalisks. Kind of noticing the purple veins inside the layer right there. That's a pretty neat effect right there. I wonder if that was added and remastered. Don't remember that previously. <coughs> anyway. Two racks to start. For Ninja, let's see if he drops an Academy or if he, again, options for three barracks play. Overlord making its way bottom right. Initial Zerglings to go ahead and scout initial counts. Command Center about halfway finished there. <coughs> One day I'll be at full health again and then I'll be unstoppable. Uh, this is what it is. The world's got to give me viruses to slow me down. Or maybe just to make me stronger. It's like we'll challenge him. Spire plopping down. SCV should get full count, and it looks like it's going to be an in-base three hatch once again. It's become very popular with Zerg lately, as it provides a little bit more larva count in mid-game. It does open up things for the Zergling Mutalist flood, as we saw, but I feel like around eight to ten Zerglings and a group of Mutalists in the mid-game provides sufficient control to go ahead and establish a third base. We are seeing two racks academy this time. Marines grouping up. I don't think we're going to see a move out. And I think we might see <coughs> with that second gas grab. Again, a larger dedication to mutalisks in the mid game. We'll see if there's a plus one weapons win. I will say Aegis's mutalisk control in game one wasn't quite sharp enough, in my opinion, to really pull out just a straight mutalisk victory. Stimpak being upgraded initial two medics out in the field 
the initial compsat stations being skipped. Oh, never mind. There they go. I was just a little bit early. A little bit early. So third hatchery going to finish. Mutilus being constructed. This engineering bay is a little bit late. So it's going to be necessary, actually, that these Marines draw back these Mutilists, potentially. Firebats out on the field to go ahead and blockade. Maybe with the distance, it'll be okay. I don't think so, though. These Mutilists might be able to get to the base and find a lack of turrets there. We will see. So Mutilists taking flight. Making the way across. This is going to be a three barracks build once again. The initial turret being constructed... Unfortunately, Aegis didn't make a beeline. And he's got these Medic Marines. Blocked towards the front. This could be fantastic or terrible now for Aegis. Firebat grouping up, able to pick off some Zerglings. Mutilus trailing and able to pick off some of these Marines in group. The Firebat able to clear out the Zerglings, but there's only three Marines remaining. And now some additional Zerglings moving out. And these Marines have got a high tail at back home, completely wiped out attack force that did provide some time for the turrets to establish themselves. But big misstep there from Ninja to start. More Zerglings being constructed, and I'm wondering if this is going to trigger a potential all-in situation to follow. Oh, all of these Marines getting obliterated. And a bunker being forced. Aegis doesn't have to commit here either. It looks like he is going to dive in. But he can just back off with, ooh, lost a Mutalisk, actually, so, and took a lot of damage. Big victory. Ninja really can't apply pressure to him right now out on the field, so it's a good time to go ahead and grab an expansion for free. But it looks like instead he's continuing to grow that attack force. Plus one weapon's about halfway finished. Has four Mutalisks, which isn't quite sufficient to snipe an SCV. Now he's grouping up with more, so now with... It, with good micro might be able to go might be able to get a few SCV. There is a sizable SCV count, but would have liked to see the focus other places. Three turrets in the natural, Marines stimming back. Factory coming out a tad late. Not massively late, but slightly where these mules are gonna have a larger window than usual to create havoc. Aegis with the actual supply lead. Some Zerglings now grouping, and I think Aegis is going to go for the dive once again. Didn't work game one, but that was without the first grouping of Medic Marines getting obliterated. This is three racks play, though, which allowed that Medic Marine grouping to be filtered in a bit more rapidly. A supply depot being placed in front to create a bit of a roadblock. Aegis supply blocking himself here and has made no motions in grabbing additional base it looks like he wants to all in it here plus one weapons has completed medic marines currently grouping up on the high ground to try to cope with this the mule is going to engage and take out the turrets at the natural to try to provoke them back down looks like he is going to be able to wipe out all the turrets so and that is provoking them down two mules losing their lives for the effort however this was a lot. This was a big investment right here. This wasn't kind of the ten minimal. This is a lot of mutalisks, and so honestly, Aegis might. And you can see he really skimped on the drone count as far as a follow-up to make this happen. Turrets immediately being reconstructed. The Zerglings still waiting along the side. I'm curious what the holdup is for the dedication of the Zerglings to this attack force. They're constructed, but just not being utilized. It's kind of dead minerals. More mutalisks grouping up. Double control tower being dropped. No science facility as of yet. And I don't think we're going to see a dropship build, so it looks like Ninja just missing a little bit under the pressure, uh, missing a few things in his build order. We do have a Hydrolsten and Lurker follow-up, so Ninja, despite the initial damage, if he holds up and just defends, might be able to get right back in this match because it looks like Aegis... Wants to go for the jugular, rather than the macro opener. Large amounts of marines flooding out. I've actually cut the gap. Unfortunately, that's opening up the zerglings to go ahead and shoot the gap in between. A lot of clutter in between point A and point B, though. 
Bunker immediately falls. We have some leftover Marines on the high ground. The Medic Marines streaming their way back to the natural expansion, but it looks like a lot of SCVs have to flee for their lives. But this is still do or die for Aegis because he's just completely neglected his worker count in between. And really didn't get a lot of SCV kills in the midst of that. Looks like he's going to be able to... That Medic actually keeping that SCV alive longer than usual. And the Mutalisks getting wiped out. Just absolutely obliterated. Not able to get a Marine kill or anything. So Aegis throwing away another attack. So it was an early advantage. Is now turning into a disadvantage in the mid game. Grabbing a third hatchery very late. The science facility is up. Science vessels are out. Irradiate being researched, and we now have a flood of additional Zerglings to go for round two. Off the bases, and a lot of lurkers being morphed on the front door. Ninja through all of this, dropping some additional bunkers, has managed to get the supply lead. He's got the upgrade lead with plus one weapons. Although there's plus one weapons on the Mutalisks, but the Mutalisks... <coughs> have there been additional mules constructed? It looks like not. So Aegis finally just dropping the Mutalist construction altogether, recognizing that science vessels are going to be out in the field. Although Even though those science vessels are coming out, I don't know, a minute later than they should otherwise. Zerglings hanging out near that third. It looks like the Mutalists might want to make a dive towards the main and see what kind of havoc they can wreak there. But there are three turrets just waiting for them. Four turrets waiting for them. And now Ninja can start making his way out on the map. And this third base, Lurkers, maybe with some hold position Lurkers out in the field, or maybe if they take a more forward position and catch Ninja by surprise, this will be okay. But otherwise... Okay, so Science Vessel's moving to the south. Are they going to find the Zergling Force? Yeah, they can just go ahead and hunt these Zerglings down. That Overlord getting taken out. The Zerglings trying to flee so they're presence remains hidden. I don't think that was successful, however. This is also ceding a degree of map control. Third gas is up and running now for Aegis, but that worker count is just much lower than it would have been. He does have the four hatcheries and multiple lurkers to try to defend that natural expansion. Looks like he's going to swing units right back around to try to disrupt a potential third base grab. Seven barracks and double starport running behind this. Thing is, is Ninja doesn't need to take this third. He can go ahead and grab the third at the three o'clock location as well. Single Zergling being wiped out right there. And Aegis, ever the aggressor, looks like he wants to go ahead and take another shot into the main. All sorts of turrets, however, catching those Mutalisks and doing significant amounts of damage. Ninja not concerned about that attack force, especially with reinforcements. Overlord distracting some of the medic marines but he's going to go ahead and careen to the natural expansion scourge critically they need to hit that same science vessel wipes them out and that actually might have been a front door save because four irradiates leaving only one lurker on the front that might have been breachable however more science vessels are taking the field looks like some zerglings took a run at the bunkers at the natural i was distracted with the scourge ninja regrouping and i don't so we do have a lot of lurkers to the north. This is going to be a very tough defense, though. Scourge getting obliterated, and the irradiates are starting to drop. This is going to be a tough defense. The Filer Mound just started. We do have double evolution chamber behind this. Medic stranded behind. So the Mutal is providing some value for Aegis here. But these lurkers very, very exposed. Two lurkers remain. And this is where, yeah, this might be breachable. One lurker down. There's the defense matrix on that forward marine. The mutalists and lurkers from the natural, or sorry, from the third, trying to group up to provide some additional defense. That might be sufficient, but it looks like they're going to just continue to walk forward, forcing lurkers forward. But it's, wow, a swath of attacks obliterating ninja's follow up. So only a handful of drones getting wiped out. The rest of the medic marines going to get cleared. More marines marching their way out. There is going to be a lot of expo- oh, just- uh, never mind, there's some lurkers there. It looks like Aegis able to just get massive amounts of lurkers. And with this and no third, things swing back to Aegis's advantage. As the filer tech is finished, he's upgrading consume, is going to have the window. Some lurkers are actually running, racing against these marines. <coughs> to go ahead and wipe them out on retreat. Doesn't need to get kills, because otherwise the medics just recharge them back to full health. 
but Ninja still hasn't grabbed his third expansion, throwing it away with that uh, last grab. The Science Vessel count getting reset as well. Looks like a barracks might have died to a Mutalisk foray earlier that I might have missed on screen. Zergling going to just go ahead and check things bottom right. Lurkers maybe wanting to make a dive at this. Aegis in scary territory for Ninja. This has been a very aggressive game on both parts. Good spread by Ninja, but still losing a good amount of Medic Marines before those Lurkers were dispatched. Like the blockade at the 3 o'clock location to make sure he can't just double expand and keep up economically. Still a sizable supply lead for Ninja overall, but once Lurker Tech and Plague actually joining, it looks like we're going to see a potential switch back to Plague Hydra Defiler. Very strong style of play. Few troops have managed to sneak across the lines. Lurker's getting wiped out between point A and point B. But Defiler gets down here, though, and it looks like it's swinging its way across. This is a sufficient attack force to shut down that third. Science Vessel's moving forward, dropping Irradiates. Good amount of Zerglings looking to take their place, but a Swarm... Yeah, Dark Swarm was dropped. Lurker's able to plant themselves. And Ninja's defense is completely out of position. He's going to have to lift off and wait to reestablish. But rather than waiting, he's just going to take a dive at that third, which I think was a potentially sizable mistake as he needs to keep these Meta Marines out in the field and maybe just box Aegis in from here. Irradiates dropping in the Dark Swarm, but not able to catch the Defiler. So the Defiler actually going to walk up and rather than dropping Plague, dropping a second Swarm and moving those Lurkers forward. The Marines going ahead and retreating. A single Lurker there. Ooh, bad rally point for Ninja right now. And this could be a game ending maneuver as you have a whole bunch of Zerglings swarming. Two Lurkers there at the natural. The Defiler remains in place. More Zerglings are moving up to provide some additional Dark Swarm supply. However, reinforcements not sufficient at the third, and now Ninja going to go ahead and counter track, maybe not forcing these units back, but it's going to be tit for tat. Drop the third, take out that third gas potentially. The Marines pressing in. Looks like they should be able to wipe that base out. The bunkers falling at the natural expansion, getting wiped out by Lurkers. The Lurkers still alive here. And they're very close to taking ramp control, but a comp set happening. That should wipe out that small attack force. And that was, that costs Aegis his third gas. And a lot of troops as he just keeps throwing troops piecemeal to try to wipe out this pocketed attack force is not having a lot of success. It looks like finally with a follow-up Dark Swarm is going to be able to move lurkers in to clean that up. So might be able to reestablish his third. Ninja redropping his third instantaneously. However, he's mined out of his main. His natural expansion is very nearly mined out. Where there's still resources left for Aegis to work with, but he's at a pitiful drone count. <clears throat> Medic Marine's still up there. Should be able to quickly reestablish that gas. Double the supply to work with for Ninja. But he still needs to grab some territory and make sure he's got some continuation mining or has a killing blow. And I don't know that with the... He's got a massive amount of science vessels, which will be a big problem for Aegis, but I don't think he's got a killing blow worth of Medic Marines. Zerglings continuing to sprint. Some fire bats within these groupings should mitigate their effectiveness. Ultralist then just now being constructed or morphed, mutated, however you want to say it. A machine shop has been dropped. This is a... I'm not sure if I like the late machine shop without at least three bases to work with. Three o'clock command center being grabbed. The barracks are continuing to hum. Ninja with a big supply lead. Sizable upgrades. Looks like there's just plus one carapace and plus one claw otherwise. Aegis trying to grab that 12 o'clock base. The science vessel streaming across. Distance mining happening at the three o'clock. Some Zerglings have managed to slip through the lines. And these troops are going to have to make their way forward to prevent that command center from being constructed. Because these Zerglings are adrenal upgraded. They can chew through that command center very rapidly. This is a lot of lost time. <coughs> and they're going to get a kill. 
rather than a cancel, I believe. As Ninja making his way towards the natural, trying to go for an eraser trick across the natural, irradiating an ultralisk as well, costing some science vessels for the effort, but at least able to get some economic disruption, dropping the drone count to 27 and continuing to press in. There's only a single lurker here and a spore colony otherwise. And actually a handful of radiates without any defiler support might be able to wipe this out. Science vessels moving to the north, finding no drones there, just gonna drop a radiates on the defiler. Three clock face, still distance mining happening there. Some mining happening to the south as well. No gas capped at either location. Sleuve lurker is grouping and this is turning into a very back and forth. I will say this has been back and forth for a good 10 minutes now. Man Center being reconstructed, a slew of troops making it out into the map. Zergling still patrolling bottom left. S defensive Spore Colony top left. Aegis still not at the late game worker count he would like, but is trying to make up for it. Is Mean just about to mine up? He does have that 12 o'clock location established. I don't know that he can really hold it though as I don't think he can defend really everything he's got against... He's just hoping that Ninja doesn't detect it, I think, at this stage. Lurker's movement's being... mirrored very quickly, wiping them out. Yeah, checking the wrong location. Let's see if he follows that up with a check at the 12 o'clock. I don't know that that's been comms added as of yet. A lot of troops have been left, however, at the main for Ninja. Zerglings have flooded through. So not a lot of map control for either player at this stage. Firebats forcing some cancellation there on the front. Single Lurker trying to do some damage. It's going to get wiped out. And again, there's no Defiler on the front. Scourge able to land on some science vessels, however. Lurkers, Zerglings, and Ultralists making the way out. But there's a huge upgrade lead. For these medic marines so despite being in somewhat small numbers while well, i take it back this might be overwhelming the mounts of zerglings and the medic marines are just going to walk which will be a retreat to their death so ninja losing some additional map control the science vessel count is still sizable for him zerglings trying to poke there at the three o'clock the doors have been opened up this is still three base versus two base so economic Economically about even. A more sizable bank, though, for Ninja overall. He still needs to cap his gas <coughs> at that third and the three o'clock location, however. And honestly, as soon as Ninja moves out a little bit and either attacks that 12 o'clock or establishes position outside or into the upper left-hand quadrant with uh, sufficient medic marines, I think he'll be able to close this match out. Mostly because the upgraded... Well, never mind. The upgraded advantage is closed. Oh, and those Marines on move command. So Zergling's getting a lot of bonus kills. Unfortunately, it looks like some Medic Marines checking bottom left to nothing. Radiates on the Ultralist, but that's going to wipe out that attack force otherwise. So, and the Science Vessel Count dropping. So where Ninja, I felt like, was in positions to win this, Aegis is holding on, throwing everything in the kitchen sink at his opponent, and starting to break through. Losing some troops here at the 3 o'clock. It's anyone's game at this stage. Ultralis and Zerglings again looking to go ahead and careen and stop that economy here at the 3 o'clock. The Medic Marines not fully engaging with this attack. Finally moving up. It would be a mistake to irradiate the Ultralis at this stage. So mostly just providing detection. The Zerglings still has managed to filter through, however. And that single Zergling, five kills on him. That's what Adrenal Upgrades will do for you. 12 o'clock base, very well saturated for ages. That third very well saturated. The natural expansion it should mine out sometime in the near future. Still no gas grab at the three o'clock or the six o'clock base. And I believe the main has been depleted for quite some time. And I believe the natural expansion isn't, yeah, it's not even, it's not depleted, but it hasn't been mining. So gas could be trouble for Ninja down the line, especially that's gonna cut into that science vessel count greatly, which is the lifeblood of any Terran army. More SCVs making the way up. And across. Finally, that 12 o'clock base has been spotted. <clears throat> Scourge landing on some science vessels, but not before that hatchery is wiped out and a sizable amount of drones 
losing their lives, but we have a counterattack of Zerglings making the way to the 3 o'clock location. Catching a lot of Marines again in transition, and even despite the two bunkers, with SCVs not pulling off the line to... Now they're pulling off the line to go ahead and provide some support repair. That might be sufficient to fight off that Ultralisk. Aegis returning back to deal with defense at the natural expansion, and that might have been sufficient for Ninja to break the game open, wiping out that 12 o'clock base. Still, Aegis hurting economically is not... really hasn't been able to keep that drone count alive. 9 o'clock base trying to be established. Three more Ultralists running out in the field. They are nearly fully upgraded. Unfortunately for Ninja, he's done a lot of kind of these moving maneuvers where he's a lot... his, uh, troops take damage while they're walking without irradiates in place. Now two irradiates can soften up those Ultralisks in retreat. Big supply lead. That three o'clock base has been established for a while now. Still haven't seen that the gas cap. This is going to be a sizable, very important attack. I don't see any defiler grouping up here with Aegis, though. It looks like it's just going to be Zerglings and Ultralisks trying to crash through. And I don't know that that's going to be sufficient. More Marines and Medics moving up to the three o'clock to clear that attack force out. <coughs> Nine o'clock base is up, but no drones as of yet in position. It looks like they're just now being constructed. The gas is finally being built at the third. No gas here at the three o'clock as of yet. Triple the supply for Ninja as he's starting to move out. A good amount of that, though, keep in mind, is still in workers. Age is still limping around. He's been at uh, really mid-game worker counts for sizable portions of this match. Although it might have played out for him just because it's left more minerals in the bank rather than forcing him to starve out at earlier stages. Big mineral bank there for Ninja, but still hurting in the gas count, which has really kept that science vessel count lower <coughs> towards these later stages. Let's see if that 9 o'clock base gets scouted. I think with this sizable grouping... Ooh, it looks like Command Center's been grabbed bottom left and some SCVs are transferring there. Ninja once again moving out to the upper left-hand quadrant. I think he dropped some comps at and has spotted this 9 o'clock base. If this 9 o'clock base falls, that will be matched. And there's only a single Zergling, single, single, single Lurker there defending currently. This could be the match. Irradiate dropped. Zerglings and Ultralisks nearby moving speedily. And we're also seeing the Eraser trick over the drone lines. <coughs> the Marines waiting at the spoke, getting separated from the Medics, though. Looks like it's not going to make much of a difference as there's a bulk enough of Marine and Medics to deal with that otherwise, and that is going to be GG from Aegis. Very up and down. Ninja is going to advance to the round of eight. Great game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you for listening.